Praise the Lord, friends. I'm so glad that you're connected with us today. I have my son, Aaron. We're gonna actually be uh, sharing one of his series today on the abundance of grace. He taught this recently on church and I loved it so much. I said, Aaron, I want you to come on television and share that with me on television. And so we're gonna be talking about it takes two things to reign in life and you don't wanna miss this broadcast. Thank you so much. Blessings. It's great to have everyone today. We're sharing on a recent series that Aaron taught, and I just loved it so much. I said, Aaron, I want you to share with uh, that with me, uh, with our audience. And so we're gonna be teaching on the abundance of grace. And I like really, Aaron, how you started off this series uh, with this uh, mention that we need two things really to reign in life mm -hmm. uh, from Romans chapter five, verse 17. And you said we need the abundance of grace and the gift of righteousness. Yeah, Romans is so powerful. Paul writes in Romans 5, 17, he says, for if by the one man's offense, death reigned through the one, much more those who receive abundance of grace and of the gift of righteousness will reign in life through the one, Jesus Christ. You know, God wants us to reign in life. He wants us to have an abundant life. You know, Jesus talked about it in John 10, 10. It's a thief that comes to steal, kill, and just to destroy. But Jesus said, I have come that you might have life and have it more abundant. Amen. Yeah. And so he wants to have us li life and life in abundance. In John 10, 10, when he says that, um, that word for abundance, uh, more abundantly, it means an extravagant, mm -hmm. abundant life. And mm -hmm. I think a lot of people really don't know how good God is and how mm -hmm. much he has for them. And uh, with a lot of way that a lot of people think about God, uh, they're going to have to have a change of mind mm -hmm. when they get to heaven. Yeah. Or they're going to be angry all the time. <laughs> I don't think you could be angry all the time. Yeah, God uh, is always extra. Yeah. His grace is extremely extravagant. Praise you God. Know, his grace is always abundant. I love that that terminology, abundance of grace and the gift of righteousness. You know, we, we, we share a lot about righteousness and how you can't earn it. I like that Paul says it's the gift of righteousness. And I, I like this, you know, I always say there's, there's two things when you begin to understand righteousness. First of all, you need to understand that we receive righteousness or right standing with God by faith. And so the way that we're placed in right relationship with God is when we put faith in Jesus. Romans 4 talks about that by faith in his grace. But then once you uh, receive righteousness by faith, uh, righteousness really becomes a foundation in your life to receive all the promises of God. Mm -hmm. And so he says in Romans 5 verse 17 again that uh, those who receive the abundance of grace and the gift of righteousness shall reign in life by Jesus Christ. So we're, we're to reign in life. If you study the actual Greek, it means we're to reign in life as kings. Mm -hmm. So God doesn't want us to be, you know, beggars or paupers. He wants us to reign in life. Mm -hmm. And we reign and rule with Jesus, praise God, mm -hmm. uh, through the abundance of grace and the gift of righteousness. Again, we receive righteousness by faith in God's mm -hmm. grace, by faith in Jesus. But then once we receive righteousness, because we're right with God, we receive all of the promises of God. We receive mm -hmm. all of the good things of God. Mm -hmm. Now you brought out three things really in your series. Uh, you brought out, first of all, that grace frees us. Yeah, when I was thinking about grace, uh, this is several years ago, but God kind of spoke to me and said, there's three um, primary aspects of grace that people need to understand. And the first one is that grace frees you. Most people understand that aspect of grace. That's talking about um, saving grace, grace that saves you. Um, the Bible says in Psalm 103, verse 11 and 12, for as high as the heavens are above the, above the earth, so great is his mercy. Uh, that, that word mercy in the Old Testament is the same word as grace, it's chesed. It's a, whenever you see mercy in the, in the Old Testament, it's usually that same 
um, concept of grace. So great is his mercy towards those who fear him. As far as the east is from the west, so far has he removed our transgressions from us. So most people understand that when they come to Jesus, that their sins have been removed, they've been washed away, they've, they've been forgiven. Right. Great, they're, they've been set free by his grace. But a lot of people kind of stay stuck there. They don't really see the, the next two aspects of grace. And the next two kind of work together. So the next, so grace first frees you, but grace also transforms you. Yes. And a lot of people still identify as a sinner, as a, you know, as a beggar, as a, um, someone who, who's not, not a king, not a queen in God's royal family, not a son and daughter. Not right they, in they, life. You know, you talked about mercy. So when you talk about mercy, what is mercy? Mercy really is uh, not getting what we deserve. Mm -hmm. Because really all of us, because of our sin, deserve hell, but we're getting heaven. Mm -hmm. So that's the mercy of God. Grace is getting what we don't deserve. Mm -hmm. So when we look back at that scripture in Romans 5, verse 17, he says, those who receive the abundance of grace and the gift of righteousness mm -hmm. shall reign in life. And I like how the Amplified puts it, reign in life as kings mm -hmm. by one Jesus Christ. So mercy, we're forgiven because of the mercy of God. Uh, Titus 3, 5 says, by his mercy, he saved us and washed it us with the washing of regeneration and the renewing of the Holy Ghost. Mm -hmm. And so it's the mercy of God that we're, that we're forgiven, mm -hmm. that we're cleansed and that, you know, um, we're not receiving judgment for our sins, but at the same point in time, there's grace that, like you say, empowers us mm -hmm. or grace makes all of the promises available. Mm -hmm. And that's really the second aspect of this righteousness. The first aspect of righteousness is that, that you know, we're right with God mm -hmm. and we are forgiven. Mm -hmm. And the second aspect is when we understand righteousness, we receive from God based on the work of Jesus. Mm -hmm. So that's really grace mm -hmm. and grace in action. When we, for instance, we receive healing mm -hmm. and, and we don't receive healing because of who we are. We receive healing because of who Jesus is mm -hmm. and what he's done by his stripes. We are healed. Yeah. So grace, so, first of all, frees us. It also transforms us. And thirdly, it empowers us. So yeah. we kind of mentioned how grace frees you, but grace transforms you. You know, um, the Bible says in second Corinthians five seventeen. therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. Old things have passed away. Behold, all things. I love that. All things have become new. So you, you've been transformed now. This is talking about who you are in Christ. And this is a great right. reality. And you have to identify with who, who God says you are. You have to identify with, with these in Christ realities. A great Bible study for believers to do is a in Christ Bible study. Go find Amen. all the in Christ, in him, by Christ, you know, by, by him, through him, find all of those scriptures. There's, there's, over a hundred of them in the New Testament, especially in Paul's writings. Right. And you can see what Jesus has done for you and what he's doing in you. So grace transforms you. But a lot of people don't have a hard time understanding that they are, they aren't, they aren't a sinner anymore. They're now a saint. Right. You know, that, that they are the righteousness of God in Jesus Christ. And when you begin to understand this, this new identity, so he made you a new creation, he gave you a new identity, he gave you brand new righteousness that's mm -hmm. one of the things that he gave you but that scripture again second corinthians 5 verse 17 if any man be in christ the same has become a new creation all things have passed away all things have become new and all things are of god that's talking about your spiritual condition mm -hmm. that's talking about your new spirit in your mm -hmm. new spirit you have brand new righteousness mm -hmm. uh second corinthians 5 21 goes on to say God made him Jesus to become sin or a sin offering for us that we might be made the righteousness of God. Mm -hmm. And we are the righteousness of God in Christ. Mm -hmm. And when you begin to see yourself that way, it really changes how you live your life. Mm -hmm. And so many people don't see their self that way. I love the scripture in Ephesians 5, 8 that says, you were darkness, but now you are light in mm -hmm. the Lord. Walk as children of the light. So when you begin to take on this new identity, I love what Aaron said, you know, begin to see what the Bible says about who we are in Christ. It's mm -hmm. over 130 times Paul says, in him, through him, by him, for him. Mm -hmm. and, and when you begin to do that study and find out that you're righteous, you're redeemed, you're sanctified, you're wise, you're blessed, mm -hmm. you know, all of these different things. Um, it really changes your perspective. It mm -hmm. changes how you approach God, changes how you, uh, 
you know, deal with the devil changes how you relate to other people. Mm -hmm. Praise That's God. That's true. And grace also empowers us. Some people have a hard time just identifying with who they are in Christ because they don't understand the, the power of grace. You know, there right. is so much power, abundant power in grace. Grace empowers you to be who God has created you to be in Christ. Amen. And I love, I, you know, Jesus understood that we had to have power, you know, that came from him. And um, he told his disciples in Acts 1.8, he said, you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you. You shall be witnesses to me in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and to the end of the earth. Right. You know, Jesus didn't want his, his disciples to go out powerless. Right. He knew to do everything that he called them to do. They would need, they would need power that came, that, that came as a grace gift. Right. So you have to be forgiven, right? You have, the blood of Christ has to be applied to your heart and you receive that by faith. Mm -hmm. You receive righteousness by faith. But if that doesn't take place, then really the Holy Spirit could not indwell you mm -hmm. like he indwells you uh, today. But because we are forgiven, because we have been you know, born again, because we have a new spirit, now the Holy Spirit can come and live mm -hmm. on the inside of us. Mm -hmm. and, and again, you're saying that we live by the power of grace. I love what Paul says in 1 Corinthians 15, verse 10. He says, I am what I am by the grace uh -huh. of God. And so, you know, grace empowers us. So grace does all these different things. And so when we begin to understand that we have received the abundant grace of God, the abundance of grace and the gift of righteousness, we can reign in life. Mm -hmm. And God wants us to reign in life. God mm -hmm. wants us to be victors, not victims. Mm -hmm. And you know, so many people are living this life as victims, but we are not victims, praise mm -hmm. God. We are victors through the Lord Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. And we are victorious through what he has made available to mm -hmm. us in his death and resurrection. And one of those things is grace, praise mm -hmm. God. Now you wanted to use an example about how grace freezes. Yeah, I want to, I actually, God gave me this picture too of, of these three aspects of grace. I want to, I want to just give you this picture of that grace frees you, grace um, transforms you and grace empowers you. So grace frees you. That's like um, your old report card in life, your righteousness report card. You know, if, if someone dug up everything you've ever done, the devil likes to do that. God does not do that. God, like as far as the East is from the West, so far has he removed your sin from you. But the devil is the accuser of the brethren. So what if he, he brought out every accusation he can make against you, brought out just a list of things you've done wrong all throughout your life, brought out this old report card. Grace frees you. That's like God taking that report card that the accuser tries to give you. Right. So when the accuser makes his, his statements against you, he makes his case against you, God takes that old report card, that old list of all of your wrongdoings, and he, he sticks it in the shredder, lights it on fire, and it, it is completely gone forever. That's grace freeing you. Right. But God just doesn't stop there. He then goes and gets, gets the report card of Jesus. He gets the list of all, all the good things that Jesus has done. You know, he's perfect, he's spotless, he's holy, he's righteous, he's full of joy, full of peace. He takes Jesus' report card and then he writes your name next to it. So his righteousness is now your righteousness. His peace is your peace. His joy is your joy. That, that's like the, the transforming power of Amen. grace. But lastly, he empowers you to do it. So he empowers you to actually live, live it out and, and be everything he's called you to be. Amen. It's by the power of grace. You know, it's not by our might, not by our power, but it's by the power of the Spirit of God on the inside of us. Mm -hmm. And uh, when we understand that, it really changes our life. So we're going to take a very short break. We'll be back right after this break. And we're going to be talking about some examples uh, of how grace frees us. Amen. So just wait a few seconds. We'll be right back. Friends, I wanna tell you about our grace package. I received a revelation of grace in Andrew Womack's ministry in 1994 after I'd been pastoring for six years. It revolutionized my life and it's helped me in so many different ways. 
I actually have been uh, called to preach and filled with the Holy Spirit in Andrew's ministry 16 years prior to that, but when I received a revelation of grace, it changed me. We've also included a great teaching from my son, Aaron Perdue, on the abundance of grace, a single CD on Entangled, a great message on grace from Aaron, and my series on Galatians, the grace of Christ. You don't want to miss this teaching. Just like it's revolutionized my life, it will revolutionize yours. You can share this with your friends. If you uh, don't want to call in and get this, you can actually listen to these free on our website at charischristiancenter.com. We want to get the word to you. Blessings. Friends, welcome back. We've been talking about grace and talking about the abundance of grace, how we reign in life by one Jesus Christ. And it takes two things to do that, the abundance of grace and the gift of righteousness. And then Aaron, as he taught this series, really had three main points that he talked about. And that is, first of all, when you receive the abundance of grace and the gift of righteousness, grace frees you, then grace transforms you, and then grace empowers you. So uh, for the rest of the broadcast today, we're going to be talking about how grace frees us. Mm -hmm. We are free by the grace of God. Amen. And whenever whenever grace frees someone in Scripture, whenever grace is presented, it's always abundant. You know, God doesn't do things in short supply. He, he is not just gives you trickles of grace. <laughs> you know, here in Colorado, when it rains, it, it rains different here than like when it rains. I used to live in Houston. When it rains, it pours in Houston. It can rain, you know, a foot <laughs> in one hour. Here when it rains, <laughs> it's, it's, it's just kind of barely gets things <laughs> wet. We're, we're kind of a high <laughs> desert climate here. You know, some people think of God's grace like that, like it's just this little bit of trickles of of rain, you know, we, we really pray for rain here. But man, when I went to Houston, I remember uh, I, I was I, I uh, was teaching some lessons after school at a middle school, and I heard it raining uh, on the school, and it sounded like it was raining hard. And when I when I got done teaching, four hours later, I went out, and there was three foot of, of water in the parking lot. I had to wade through to get to my car. A lot of roads were washed out. Like it 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 just drenches there. It. <laughs> it can rain a foot per, per minute or a foot per hour. Um, that's kind of a picture of God's grace. It is completely abundant. It is, it is all you can, you know, get, get all your jars out because he'll fill all of them up. That's Amen. a picture of his grace. Yeah. And just like that widow woman, uh, you know, who... who I remember one time uh, you were on the phone with us and you were trying to get somewhere. <laughs> it was raining like that. And down there, it'll, it'll totally flood the roads completely over and stuff. And we prayed for you mm -hmm. and uh, you made it home uh, miraculously, but, uh, I think you, you, it washed the front license plate off your car. Mm -hmm. And I think the, that, uh, that was registered in Colorado. And I think the Houston police, somebody found it and brought it to them. They gave us a call a month later or something mm -hmm. and said, Hey, we got this license plate. <laughs> well, it washed off your car in that rainstorm. <laughs> yeah. So God's grace is completely abundant. It, it's wild. It's I, wildly abundant. I, I think you used the example when you were teaching. What a great example of like, you know, when we receive the abundance of grace, it's like swimming in the ocean. Mm -hmm. And uh, man, it's like there is an abundance of grace. That's mm -hmm. a great example. Mm -hmm. Praise God. Well, give us this example you want to talk about. Yeah. Freedom. Yeah. Let's go to uh, Luke 13, verse 10. Um, this is just a great picture of, of Jesus just putting that abundance of grace on full display. So go to Luke 13, verse 10. It says, Now he was teaching in one of the synagogues on the Sabbath, and behold, there was a woman who had a spirit of infirmity 18 years and was bent over and could in no way raise herself up. But when Jesus saw her, he called her to him and said to her, Woman, you are loosed from your infirmity. And he laid his hands on her, and immediately she was made straight and glorified God. So this woman had, had and it, it says here this was a spirit of infirmity. So this is a, an attack from the devil on her body. For 18 years she had been bent over. And I don't think that Jesus was necessarily trying to uh, make a scene. No. He was just teaching in the synagogue, and, and um, it says this woman was bent over, couldn't even raise herself up. I think Jesus just wanted to look her in the eyes. Just I think he wanted... To look her in the eyes, I think, she, you know, this is a, a daughter of Abraham, someone that he loved, someone that he, he cared about. He just wanted to be able to look her in the eyes and just went over for her and prayed for her. He wasn't trying to make a scene, wasn't trying to cause a riot, trying to cause a ruckus. 
But um, when grace is put on display, sometimes it, it, ups, it ruffles some religious people's feathers. Yeah. So that's what we see here. It says in verse 14, the ruler of the synagogue answered with indignation. Yeah. Yeah, you know, sometimes when people are, are freed, when, when that abundance of grace is put on display, man, um, that, that spirit of religion becomes indignant. It becomes upset. It says, because Jesus had healed on the Sabbath. And he said to the crowd, there are six days on which men ought to work. Therefore, come and be healed on them and not on the Sabbath day. You know, God wants to heal people any day of the week. Praise God. And how did Jesus heal this woman? First of all, he spoke a word mm -hmm. of freedom to her. Mm -hmm. He said, woman, you are loosed from your infirmity. Mm -hmm. And then he laid hands on her, ministered the power of God mm -hmm. to her. So th there was a speaking aspect and then there was a, you know, a, an aspect of ministering through the power of the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. And uh, Jesus freed this woman. Mm -hmm. uh, when he freed her, this uh, religious ruler got mad. Mm -hmm. <laughs> You know, it's it's crazy what religion gets mad about. Mm -hmm. And well, you see, there's just no grace there. This woman, if you think about, it, she had been been in this condition for 18 years, and um, religion then, doesn't care about the people. No, it does it cares about their religious rules. Mm -hmm. And you know, there's a difference between religion and Christianity. Mm -hmm. And Christianity is a relationship with God through mm -hmm. Christ. It's, mm -hmm. it's a life-giving relationship with God, but it, it's not a bunch of religious rules and regulations. Mm -hmm. and, and, you know, the scripture says in Romans 14, verse 17, the kingdom of God is not meat and drink, not rules and regulations, but righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost. Mm -hmm. And so here, this religious leader was really operating in, uh, you know, religion, legalism, you know, operating in the rules and the regulations. And, and Jesus comes and healed this woman and it made him, um, you know, this religious leader mad. And Jesus said, listen, don't you take care of your, your donkey and your cow? Yeah, I like what he says it's in verse 15. <laughs> the Lord then answered him and said, hypocrite, does not each one of you on the Sabbath loose his ox or donkey from the stall, lead it away to, to water it. So ought not this woman being a daughter of Abraham, whom Satan has bound, Think of it for 18 years, be loosed from this bond on the Sabbath. So I just like um, what he said about this, this sickness. It wasn't, it wasn't from God. She's a daughter of Abraham. God yeah. cares about her. She's a person of faith. And it says that Satan has bound her. Yeah. You know, Jesus wants to free you from anything that Satan tries to bind you with. You know, the devil binds people. He hinders people um, from, you know, he is that thief that comes to steal, to kill, and to destroy. To destroy, that's what he was doing to this woman. He was like slowly killing her, destroying her, holding her back. Mm -hmm. And he said, Satan is the one that did this. And, and he right. put his grace on full display. And it was an abundant Amen. picture of grace. So Jesus freed her from this sickness. And I love what he says, Satan is bound. Mm -hmm. Who is the author of sickness? Satan is the author of sickness. He's the author of sin. Mm -hmm. He's the author of disease. He's the author of death. Mm -hmm. He's the author of lack. Mm -hmm. Satan is, is evil. Everything evil comes from the devil. Mm -hmm. and, and, you know, a lot of people think that God is putting sickness on people to teach them something. I, we were taught that in, in, you know, when I was crazy. That's religion. That's mm -hmm. legalism. That's not the gospel. Mm -hmm. That's not the truth. Jesus never put sickness on one person. Yeah, and, and Jesus is a full and final revelation mm -hmm. of God. And, and, you know, in this era of that we live in, of grace, God is not putting sickness on anyone. Mm -hmm. Now, people can open themselves up to the devil mm -hmm. by their own doing. But I want you to know that sickness and disease is the work of the devil. So we hate sickness like we hate sin because we know it comes from the same place. Mm -hmm. And Satan binds people with sin as well. A lot of people are trapped in right. sin, trapped right. in, in um, wrong thinking, trapped in, in you know, sinful lifestyles, just trapped in sinful addictions. And that, that's not God. That's, yes. that's Satan that wants to bind people. But I, I love Jesus that. Jesus wants to free you. He freed her. And it said, when he said all these things, all of his adversaries were put to shame. Yes. Grace can put some of those things to shame. Grace put that stuff to shame. All the multitude rejoiced for all the glorious things that were done by him. So the majority rejoiced. Mm -hmm. Praise God. The regular people rejoiced. Mm -hmm. I believe when the work of God is done, mm -hmm. common people rejoice. Mm -hmm. 
religious people sometimes they they're kind of a, a mess mm -hmm. and this this was kind of this situation this man didn't care anything really about this woman and her being healed and her being free he just cared about the religious rules mm -hmm. and jesus said come on you know don't you take care of your cow don't you take care of your donkey and isn't this woman get this being a daughter of abraham mm -hmm. healing is a covenant right mm -hmm. And when we come into the covenant, see, we come into the covenant, we have a covenant mm -hmm. that includes healing. Mm -hmm. And when we're born again, we come into the covenant, just like God made a covenant with Abraham. He made a covenant with Israel. He said, I am the Lord who heals you. We come into that covenant by faith mm -hmm. in his grace. And we, you know what, have a covenant right to be healed. Mm -hmm. Just as much as we do to be forgiven because mm -hmm. Jesus paid for our forgiveness and our healing at the same time. Yeah, when Jesus was talking about healing once, he described it as being the children's bread. Yes. You know, and we used to have this um, scripture on our refrigerator that I will bless your bread, I will bless your water, I will take sickness away from the midst of you. I remember right. in Cape Carson, where my parents first pastored a, a town town of just 300 people in eastern Colorado, uh, for a period of time, the water wasn't very good. They even told you... Not we to took drink that the water. scripture and we put it over our kitchen sink in the window. Mm -hmm. I'll bless your bread and bless your water and take sickness from me. And it wasn't very long. They had this thing on the water bill and you, you could go down and get water if, if you had a pregnant you know, mom or if you had kids under five, I think. They didn't want you to drink the water. And I went mm -hmm. down there and they said, oh, that water cleared up last month. Mm -hmm. But we have to leave that sign on the water bill for a year. Mm -hmm. And so it cleared up when we put that scripture Hallelujah. Over our kitchen sink where the water came up, God healed the water for that whole city. Mm -hmm. Praise God. God does things like that. He did things like that in the Old Testament. Mm -hmm. And uh, he does things like that now when people believe the promises of God. There's power in God's promise. Mm. And maybe you're in a place today that you need to receive healing. You need to receive forgiveness. You need to receive this freedom and deliverance like Aaron's been talking about. You know, we have people that are here that are ready to pray for you, ready to minister for you, to you so just give us a call today if you need prayer if you want product if you want to partner with us and help us share this great message of grace around the world give us a call today we would love to hear from you thanks so much and blessings praise the lord friends i want to invite you to church this coming sunday morning whether you're in colorado springs or whether you're wherever you're at if you're in colorado springs you can see us sunday morning at 8 30 or 10 30 a.m live but you can also watch us with our live stream congregation at 8 30 or 10 30 a.m or you can go to our website and get it anytime at charischristiancenter.com what is grace what is the purpose of the law and how do you appropriate god's grace in your life Get answers to all these questions and more with the Grace Package. You'll receive the abundance of grace, the revelation of grace, Galatians, the grace of Christ, and Entangled CD series, all for $39. When you call 719-418-4000 or visit charischristiancenter.com. Thanks for watching Grace for Today. This broadcast has been made possible by our faithful partners. If you would like to become a partner, need prayer, or have a question, please call us at 719-418-4000. Or to partner online, go to charischristiancenter.com slash give. You can write us at P.O. Box 63733, Colorado Springs, Colorado, 80962. See you next time on Grace for Today.